Hello, everybody. I am Georgina Maldonado, and I am the product manager for the Moses software product. And this is Loadout Tech Talk 2. I'm going to do a presentation, and I have broken the presentation up into the loadout analysis and part of the jacket analysis and then the barge analysis. And of course, um, please put in your questions as they come up. You might remember this slide. On the left-hand side, we have part of the output, and we have the load group that will represent this output as for the barge longitudinal strength analysis. So I'm going to talk about these load groups and how you can put them into Moses. Now, when you're doing a, a ballast design, the idea is to eventually do a longitudinal strength analysis. And you will need these load groups so that you can turn them on and off for each stage. And this makes your work your workflow a bit easier. So this is a cartoon rendition of what we, where we were at and for loadout Tech Talk 1. And uh, for position stage 10, we have the jacket partially on the barge. So here is a cartoon jacket. And you see that there are some uh, skid shoes and that it is being slid onto the barge. And as far as the barge is concerned, that's the green part, you have a you have some spread load. And that's what the green arrows are meant to represent. The load from the jacket to the barge is being spread over that area. So if we were to look at this problem as we did in the university, we have our beam and we have our distributed load for the buoyancy, and then we have our two loads that represent the load of the jacket. So now in the next few slides, I'm going to talk about how to represent these different types of loads in Moses. So here we have the load um, F cargo, meaning that it could be a jacket or a deck, but um, right now I'm just leaving it as F cargo. It is a distance uh, 200 length units from the bow. And I have put in the commands that you would you put either in your data file or as or, or in your command file as part of mEdit. And remember, mEdit stands for model uh, edit. Now you notice that for the part cargo, I have used the option minus L dist, and I have spanned it over just one length unit. And for the light ship, right, I did not even use the L ship letters. I just left them as a barge. And I did not use an L dist. And we will see that when you don't use an L dist, it just, Moses just puts it in as a point load. Now, um, you also see that for eldest, for cargo, I made it from 0, negative 0.5, 0, positive 0.5. So that means it, it has a length of one unit. And for um, the barge, I just left it with, again, I left, I did not put that option in there. Um, but also, please notice that the location OK, so for part cargo, I have the center at 0, 0, 0. And then if you look over here on the right-hand side, you see that I moved the cargo to um, the location x equals 200. OK, so that, that puts it right at the same x location as the light ship. And you see the light ship I actually explicitly put in um, star BCG 200, 0, 30. OK, so I know that the two loads are located at x equals 200. Um, again, with the barge, I was able to, I, I decided to just put it in explicitly. And with the part cargo, I did the describe part. And if we do a shear and bending moment, this is what we get. And um, of course, you see that there's a big change there around x location 200. And this is what we expect, um, and this is what we learned in university.
Okay, but um, usually our usually our uh, light chip is spread over the entire barge. So for this, we would go ahead and put an L dist on that weight that we associated with the barge. Okay, and again here, I am using L dist 0 to 400. Okay, and that is different than that L dist that I'm using for the cargo. And again, that is because on the cargo one, I'm using the and describe part cargo move. Okay, so you can see that for the barge, there's also a part barge. And since I am not moving that part barge, then the X coordinate system for that part barge remains at the bow. Now for the cargo, that coordinate system for the part cargo gets moved with that described part cargo. So L dist functions by looking at where the part X coordinate system is. Okay, so again, if we went ahead and we did our shear and bending moment diagram. Okay, so here, this kind of looks the same, doesn't it? And that we would expect it to look the same because there's a big change at the X equals 200 location. But if we were to compare the two shear and bending moments we have done, okay, so we see that there is a, a one that is um, has a higher load, okay, so that is the one where we have two point loads, okay, the point load for cargo and then the point load for light ship. And of course now the green line is meant to represent the analysis we did where the, with the distributed light ship, and of course we would expect a, lo a lower value. Okay, and of course, um, right, and if we were still in university, we would probably have been asked to do a problem with both of the, both of the uh, loads spread, uh, distributed evenly over the whole span. Okay, and here, again, I'm going to point out that for the part cargo, because I'm moving it with the described part cargo minus move, okay, I'm able to do positive and negative 200, and because of the part barge, since I don't move that one, I can use 0 to 400 for the option minus L dist. Okay, and then again, I'm going to do the shear and bending moment diagram, and you see here, if you look at the values on the y-axis, that there's a y-axis on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. You see, it's, it's all noise. It's all values very near zero. And if we compare it to the values that we had gotten earlier, we see that this it adds this um, cayenne, this red line, and you see that it is basically at zero. And that's kind of what we expect. And that's, um, so, um, in that first picture that I showed you at the beginning of the of the presentation, that the skid shoes had a length, right? They weren't that small one unit that I have been using earlier. So here, um, what about if my light ship and my cargo was spread over 40 length units? Okay, so here we have the on top. Um, I have the barge, so it's negative 180 to 200, and then for the part cargo, I have plus and minus 20. Again, I'm moving the cargo with described part cargo move. And here we added that blue line, and you can see that it is just not as large as that first line where we had two point loads. Okay, so um, what we are really after is that the light ship is spread over the entire beam and that the cargo or each skid shoe will be spread over a, a distance. And of course, part of your project is that they're going to tell you how big the skid shoe is. So here's um, how it's supposed to be uh, represented um, with our free body diagram. 
And um, again, their commands are shown on the left-hand side, the cargo with the eldest, and then the describe part move. And then just the barge and the barge, we don't move the part coordinate system. Okay, so this is stage 10 from the loadout tech talk. Okay, um, some of you uh, might remember it. And this was our jacket and we are sliding it onto the barge. And if we look at it closely, we have all of these hard points. Okay, so this is where I have been told that there are some skid shoes or some support that will transfer the load of the jacket onto the barge. Okay, so putting it into our free body diagram that we have been working with, we have on the bottom, we have all the buoyancy, and then we have the light ship, and then we have the sets of arrows representing each one of our skid shoes. And um, the figure was getting kind of crowded, so I did not put in every single skid shoe. There were, there were nine skid shoes, and we're going to distribute them over four length units. Okay, and this and this would, for example, be what you would put into your data file. And I have described this as load group stage 10. And um, I described it as a load group because I plan to do all of the stages in one Moses run. And when I do all of the stages, making it a load group, I'm able to turn them on and off. One of the reasons I'm going to do it all in one run is because I want to be able to get my ballast sequence. I, 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 um, when I work with the, with the yard, um, I, I talk to the people manning the pumps, and of course they don't like to be putting water in and taking it out. Um, de depending on how their pumping system is, that's actually that could be a lot of work to change the flow direction. So um, I need to be able to view the ballast sequence and make sure I'm I'm considering the people at the pumps. Um, so lines 39 to 47 are the node locations, and then lines um, 48 to 56. That is the load that I got from that um, restraint load report. Okay, um, I actually have named here where I have the option minus CAT. It stands for category. Okay, I have actually given them giving each one of those weights a name. It may, it just makes it a little easier for me when I review the buoyancy. It will, excuse me when I review um, the category report. So I just want to make sure that I can check back to that restraint report. And this is what our command file would look like. So here I have put the section of command file for stage 10 and stage 11. And you see that the command structure is very similar between the two. Okay, um, you apply, so that first line, apply load group at zero. And then I, the I-627 is the name of the barge. So. As a precautionary measure, I turn everything off first, and then I only turn on what I, what stage I am working on, uh, and that is just my convention. And I just, I, I do it that way um, because it it um, helps me um, reduce error in what gets turned on. Okay, um, a lot of this longitudinal or all the longitudinal strength is done in the hydrostatics menu. Um, I have chosen to use a selector, that is line 37, for which compartments can be used. I first asked Moses to um, suggest a, a, a ballast arrangement. Okay, the, um, when that colon STG 10 and then colon STG 11, it'll use the compartments that are selected on line 37. Okay, usually that that uh, ballast arrangement that Moses suggests, it's, it, is a, it is a good place to start, um, but usually you, I do have to alter it a little bit. And that is what I am showing on the left-hand side, lines 39 to 41, whether when I change the percentage or change the amount or change the sounding. 
okay um, and you have those you have those three options for um, controlling how much ballast is in each compartment um, after I change the um, ballast arrangement I always ask for equilibrium okay even if I did not change what Moses had suggested I will still ask for equilibrium and that is just a check um, um, there's no if 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 I am at equilibrium and then I ask for equilibrium, it takes like half a second for that calculation to report that nothing changed. Um, and I'm only and the only reason I do that is just as a check because I don't want there to be errors later on. Okay, um, the command repsum um, that is a macro I have written. It it, it does come with a, a set of samples under load bal and um, that uh, it creates, uh, for example, buoyancy and weight report, um, for uh, forces report, um, configuration report. Uh, it just, it's just, it can contain some reports that I know I will want for each stage. Um, and I made sure that here for this presentation, I have the commands to create those moment uh, shear and for shear and bending moment diagrams. So that's lines 44 to 50. Okay, um, so once you are at equilibrium, all you need to do is type in moment and then uh, your allowables. Um, report will put your results to the output file. And I put this plot command. This is the most uh, common uh, plotting of that set of, uh, of that set of numbers. So again, um, so here we go, the ballast change. James, is there a question? I, sorry, George, there, there is a question. And uh, okay. I'll just remind people that you are able to okay. write questions into me at any time that suits you. Um, I, if we know that certain compartments aren't accessible, uh, how do we keep those ones out of the analysis? Oh, okay. Thank you for that question. You're, you're, um, for if you want them out of the analysis, uh, for example, here on line 37, I could also have added the minus select, the um, minus select. Uh, my, okay, so the command is select, and then minus select, and then there's minus accept, and so that will keep Moses from using that compartment with the ampersand compart ballast command okay um, if you really want to like uh, totally exclude those compartments there is a way that you can tell um, Moses to um, that that the, its maximum and minimum is zero okay, okay. and um, I will have to look up that command I, I don't have that one uh, uh, with at the top of my head right now um, but there, there is uh, some other ways of just uh, excluding that compartment completely. Okay, any more questions? Great, I do have one other question waiting here at the moment. Um, nope. And like I say, if you have any questions, please type them through as they come up. Um, uh, when and how do you define the sounding tubes? Oh yes, the sounding tubes are part of the describe compartment uh, model. So as part of the data file, when you first usually first describe the outer hull, and then you describe each compartment. And as part of that compartment description, you put in the sounding tube, and the sounding tube would be uh, two nodes, and then um, you tell it uh, which way the sounding tube goes. Of course, you're going to pick bottom to top. Um, but uh, yet, yeah, it's part of the compartment description. Uh, thanks, George. That's all I have okay. for, for right now. All right, great. Um, so again, uh, lines 37 to 41 is the ballast arrangement. Um, 42, you check for the barge condition, draft roll, and trim. 
And then what I'm showing here is lines 43 to 49 is the how to report. Okay, um, again, here's the ballast arrangement. And we can check that this, what, for example, that P01 and S01, that they were filled to 100%. There is some, I'm going to show some variety of reports. P01, here we go, it is at 100%. So this is one of the reports. This report that, the command that generated this was ampersand status compartment. Okay, and it, it gives you a listing. Um, there's also the buoyancy and weight report. And uh, here again, we see, for example, P01 and P02 were filled to 100%. And the sounding is 10.97, which is actually 11. Um, so that's different ways to check your results. And then um, remember I told you that the, one of the reasons that I use the load group, describe load group command, is because I want to look at all of my stages in one output. OK, so for example here, this is uh, summary of the compartment baluster. Okay, so yes, this is just that same report, but uh, with different column headings. But in this report, there's also part of it that says event 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, and so I will be able to ask Moses, for example, I'll be able to ask Moses to tell me, to tell me which compartments have been filled and which ones have been emptied. Um, for example, here in this diagram, the navy colored ones means that they were ballasted, and the wheat colored compartments means that uh, they were deballasted. Okay, um, it, again, this is just a visual. Uh, you know, a lot of times we, uh, when we're looking at these table, at the tables, a lot of times when we're looking at these tables, it's hard to completely comprehend what is really going on, and um, a lot of times a picture helps us understand a little bit better. And uh, for example, that, that, that was stage 11. And we could see, OK, so this is stage 10. And we could see um, stage 11, right? We can see that, oh, now the compartments towards the stern of the barge, they were deballasted on the previous one, and now I'm ballasted. And for example, stage 12, I'm deballasting again. So probably the guy that's in charge of the pump on those compartments, he's not going to be happy with me. OK, so before I send my results out, I'm going to try to see what it is that maybe I can change the ballast somewhere else so that that, that person at the pump isn't thinks, thinks better of me than I'm just making him work. So um, you see event 12, I, was, I did a little better with keeping it to be to balance it, but he's probably going to be unhappy with me again on event 13 where I changed his flow direction. Another way to look at this would be to look at the, um, at the events and the soundings. So um, you see here that blue line, that blue line, it's this sections here for 12 to 14 where um, I'm making a lot of those a lot, a lot of those pump handlers, I'm making them unhappy with me. Um, I, I'm probably going to have to go back and redesign this uh, ballast sequence. But uh, this type of output, is, it is um, available as part of the PRC post um, menu. And that concludes my presentation. And if somebody, um, if there's other questions, um, I I'm here to answer them. Um, great. I've just got a couple of questions I can see coming through right now, but I have one ready to go from uh, right back at the start of the presentation, George. Uh, do we need to define parts, and okay. when is a part defined? OK. Um, you don't necessarily need to define parts. Okay, um, you can do the whole loadout sequence with just um, 
load groups and just you define each weight exactly where it is going to be located like you like I showed with, with the, the part barge so so if you just if you do not have parts all of your weights will belong to the part barge the part barge always exists okay so the um, at, so once you have your load groups as all of part barge all you need to do is turn on and on off the load group the reason that I put in a part is because I know the distance between my skid shoes okay and um, it's going to be easier for me to move around that set of points and then just associate loads to where they they for where they are located instead of me having to type in each location every time um, I, I know a lot of times I you know I, I do the calculations either on a piece of paper or with an Excel spreadsheet and even on the Excel spreadsheet, if all I do is copy paste, sometimes I even mess that up, and that's why I have um, I put in a set of nodes to represent each, where each skid shoe is, and then I just um, move it. Um, I don't know if you recall, as part of the load uh, bow part one, the log file also showed the distance um, that each that that leading node is from the key and based on that I can move my nodes for each stage and so um, I mean I it, it is a little bit more math but uh, once you get it set up it makes um, I think it makes my life a little easier so you do not necessarily need a describe part um, oh and you can do the describe part in the data file or you can do it as part of the command file in a M edit menu I hope that answered the question. Uh, yes, I think it did. Thank you. Um, now another question I have here is regarding uh, LDIST command. Uh, I understand that um, that it distributes the load uniformly along a vessel. However, for a typical vessel, it's not uniform. Um, can you describe the non-uniform? Oh, parameter? yeah. So you can, well, one, you can put in several you can put in several pound weights and then put the L dist for each section I, I get um, for each uh, longitudinal location okay so this is really just distributed them along the X axis okay so if you know how far um, if you know your for example your crane if you happen to have a crane if you know what, what distance your crane takes you can put a um, just a pound weight under the described part barge okay uh, just put a pound weight and then do the L dist for the crane and then you can put that minus CAT option and then for that CAT option you can go ahead and label it crane for example and then you could have several of those and then that could be uh, how you um, distribute your non-uniform light chip weight I hope that answered the question Um, yeah, and I've just got to thank you through on that one. Uh, the some of these operations are quite slow. Um, can we can we model the tidal cycle? Uh, oh yes, yes, operation? that's right. Um, they they a lot of these operations are very slow, and what a lot of people do is they set out a set of compartments, and maybe that's what the other question was about. How do you make sure that a set of compartments aren't included so that you can use them for when the tide comes in and out. So um, yeah, uh, that, that's usually what people do is they um, set up some compartments that they're going to be used for tide. But then you also have the ampersand environment. On the ampersand environment command, there's a minus tide option. OK, so um, you can do your whole set of stages right from from for example here I had 14 so you do all of 0 to 14 with the um, defaults and you make sure that your condition doesn't change and then you do it and then you can add to you, you can do a loop or add to the bottom of your command file um, a tide and then you can see what um, what uh, changes in in those stages and hopefully um, 
hopefully just the draft changes, not the roll and trim. But um, yes, you, you can't, a lot of people just set a set of compartments that they're going to use to control for tide, and then you include the tide with ampersand environment minus tide. I hope that answered the question. Uh, yes, and I think that has possibly led on to the next question. Um, I, for a yard in a fresh water port, um, can we change the specific gravity for the fresh water? Oh, yes. Okay, so yes, that is part of the defaults, um, the fresh, uh, that you set the specific gravity. Um, you can also set the specific gravity of the water that's going into the compartments. Okay, um, so there, there is a couple of places to change specific gravity. One is um, ampersand default, and then the other one is as part of the compartment definition, you can tell it what the specific gravity of the water going in is going to be. Okay, I hope that answered the question. Great. That does. Um, now, I have a couple of people that have asked about the input files. Um, now, they are available in the, um, uh, with the install, oh, sorry, these files I believe are based on the install that uh, are in the sample files with the install. Um, and I can flick anyone through a link for that if, uh, if they want to message me. Um, or you can go and hunt them down yourself. Um, now, unless there are any other questions that anyone's about to send through, that is the end of the questions I have, Georgina. That's great. Well, I'm really happy people attended today. I appreciate your time.